I'm Matty Beneers uh, with the Seattle Kraken, number 10. So Matty Veneers, last season was the uh, everything sort of touched uh, by gold. Everything you guys touched rather turned to gold. There's the playoff success. There's rookie of the year. Uh, the franchise is a huge success. Coachella Valley, the AHL team is mm -hmm. a smashing success as well. What stood out for you? Yeah, like you said, it was, you know, I mean, it was a fun year. You know, I think that it was a tough first year, you know, coming in. Uh, someone mentioned it before, you know, Vegas putting up some high expectations in the first year and, uh, you know, Seattle not doing so well. And, you know, just being able to come in and, um, you know, I think we obviously got some really good pieces from the offseason after the first year and and we were able to, you know, kind of put it together and find an identity for our team and, um, you know, just just get closer, get better, better chemistry together. It was, it was fun overall. And we were able to, you know, have some success. And I think once we had some success and got some confidence, I think that was important. Um, we kind of took off from there. So it was, you know, overall it was, it was a great, you know, great second year and, um, you know, great, great getting to playoffs and able to win that first series. Mm -hmm. I'm always like when you guys won that series and you all went into the locker dressing room together, what was that moment like when you're all celebrating? Like what stood out for you? That was huge. Yeah, it was huge. I mean, it was, it was, it was awesome. I mean, we were going, we were going pretty crazy. We were so happy. Um, you know, funny enough, I, you know, not sound, make this sound weird in any way, but I think we all fully believed we were going to win that series. Um, that doesn't sound weird. That's athlete I, confidence, yeah, right? Yeah, it's just yeah. we were like in uh, – it was it was great, and it was the best thing ever that no one else thought we were going to win that series. And I think, um, you know, it, I obviously it was it was a great series, and they played awesome, and uh, it, it definitely could have went either way. But, um, you know, getting that first one, winning that, going to game seven, and, uh, you know, we had so many older guys – like we had so many of those guys that, you know, had stepped up hard in the playoffs especially uh guys that had been around for a while you know the schwartz the bjork strand like um you yeah. know they just you know came into playoffs and and you know acted like they've been there before and it was it was fun for me to see that and get that experience and then winning was just you know getting that first one out of the way was awesome whose reaction was the best like who in the room was the best i think i i don't remember everyone's but i do remember ebbs because George Everly was sitting next to me and um you know that guy might might want to win the cup more than anyone I've ever seen in my life <laughs> um and he was just he was just ecstatic and he was just giving you know everyone high fives giving hugs around he was like let's go I knew it let's do it um uh, <laughs> so he was he was super happy now he doesn't have a guitar song of, of the Kraken like he did of the Islanders does such a thing exist yet yeah, I think so. I think he does have something <laughs> oh, like that. I think oh, he has we might something. have to get him to play it again. Da, 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 da. Oh, didn't he? Didn't That's he right. He did it. Yeah. I played it on the yep, pod, or yep. at least a chorus. Uh, one. He has of some it. every once in a while. He'll send me. He'll send videos after games and just like kind of him freestyling. Uh, he's good. Uh, he's pretty good. Oh, he's talented. Those are coming out. Yeah. Mm. You know, there, there, there is, you know, nothing like Stanley Cup playoffs. Like, mm. it's the best to watch. Yeah. I can only imagine what it's like to play. Uh, what is it like? out there there's a the regular season and that's great and that's cool yeah but playoffs is a different beast and yeah. when i say it's a different beast how is it a different beast for a for a player yeah i mean everyone does everyone says that it's a different beast and it it really is it's just it's just so much faster there's more care um you know guys are finishing their hits guys are on the four check no one's in, like everyone's you know everyone's doing the right thing all the time and there's just you know, so much less time and space and, you know, you know, a lot less, you know, error, I would say, because everyone's in their spots, everyone's backing mm -hmm. up their line mates, their teammates. Um, so it's just, it's especially that first game in Colorado with the place going crazy. Um, you know, I remember we go up one, nothing and they start getting some momentum. The crowd's going crazy. They score one goal. The building is crazy. And no, you can't hear anything. Our coach is trying to say things like you can't hear anything on the bench. Next shift, another goal. Like, like it was nothing. So it's, it's pretty, you know, it's obviously it's high paced. It's, 
super physical. Everyone's doing the right thing. And then just the the effect of the crowd in playoffs versus mm-hmm. regular season. Like it's obviously effective in the regular season, but in playoffs it was like, yeah, I couldn't even hear myself think how loud it was. <laughs> and and same thing happened, same thing happened vice versa when we were in Seattle. Uh, it was just that two goal swing, you know, we scored one, the place goes erupts. And then you score another one right after that. Cause you know, it's just chaotic. And if you're on the opposite side of that momentum, it's, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. <laughs> you know what the, uh, the people say the best thing in sports is in a game like that, when the, when the other team's building goes quiet. Yeah. Yes. Like that must be, that is true. That's the best. Feeling. Oh, it was great. Yeah, no, we, yeah, we got that a little bit in game game one when we scored that first goal and it was, it was pretty quiet throughout. And then they scored that first goal and it's just like, eruption yeah. i mean we had and then we even um you know they quieted us down a little bit and then you know we they were chanting mccarr the whole game that the, those one games <laughs> at the end of the at the end of the series that was that was pretty that was pretty great probably crazy for him too he's like these people seventeen thousand people chanting my name right now <laughs> not even in my building um but so yeah that was it was it was a fun series really fun um as jeff mentioned phenomenal season for last year culminating in the calder trophy Every young player, though, they go through a game where they're like, holy smokes, like, what have I kind of gotten myself into? And mm-hmm. I was wondering, what was that night for you where you looked at it and said, wow, like, I- I'm in the I'm in the big leagues now? Yeah. Yeah, I had I had I had one of those couple of those. Um, <laughs> I would say my first experience is that was pretty early on Edmonton and um, McDavid had maybe two goals and an assist in the first five minutes. And I was out there for all three of them. And, uh, and I was just sitting there. I was like, Ooh, this is going to be a long night. <laughs> Maddie, <laughs> so if, if, a- if you're a young kid and Connor McDavid has roasted you in the first three shifts, don't feel special. <laughs> he <laughs> no. does it to everybody. I, yeah, I agree. It was just a, it was definitely, definitely a good wake up call. Um, that who was- talked you out of that one then who, who helped you with that? Um, yeah, that was, you know, Everly and McCann, you know, it was, you know, tough game and, um, just wasn't going, definitely wasn't going our way. And, uh, you know, those guys were just helping, helping throughout the game and, you know, just keep going, just keep doing the right things. Like, you know, and after the game, they're like, you know, you're going to have games like that where it doesn't go your way and, you know, the puck's not bouncing your way. You're not just not feeling it right. And those are the games where you kind of have to simplify and just, you know, try to do one, you know, one good thing, right. You know, try mm-hmm. to help the team in one way, whether it's, uh, you know, simplifying, you know, getting in the four check, like simple, simple things. You know, those are, those are the games when that happens. Let me ask you about Dave Haxtall. And, uh, you know, one, one of the things that we noticed last year a lot was how he manages the forwards and how he manages ice time. And no one's getting into the 20s and everyone's double digits. First line to fourth line, like mm-hmm. Boston was the same with, with Montgomery, Dallas with um, Pete DeBoer kind of does the same thing as well. But I'm, I'm watching Hackstall, we all are. And we're like, this is such an, 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 an even balanced attack from the first line to the, to the, to the fourth line. Mm-hmm. Any moments where you're like, yeah, um, 18 minutes a game, I could really like, you know, 22 <laughs> would kind of feel a bit better coach. Or do you just say to yourself, we're a four line team? Yeah, we're we're a four line team. I don't think anyone's really thinking that. Um, and you know, last year we you know we had we had games where you know our fourth line would s- score three goals, we'd win three one or three two. So you know, it's it's a full team game, and and you know that's our style of play. You know, we don't you know we don't have that one line playing playing twenty twenty two minutes a night and scoring five goals. You know, we have every line playing, you know somewhat similar and uh we got one goal from every line and mm. um you know it's a pretty it's a pretty fun way to play because everyone's contributing and everyone's involved in the game um and you're not really you know you're not relying on one on one line and you know that's also helpful too because if one line you know maybe not having a great game that night you know you got three others to back you up yep. so um you know that was just you know how how it was and you know worked for us so i want to ask you about your roommate He's a good player. Mm-hmm. I don't know him that well. Yeah. Tell tell us something a little bit about Will Borgen and why are you guys living again together for year two? Yeah, I mean, and who's the grown up? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say Will's probably more of the grown up. Um, 
rightfully so he is older so he should be <laughs> but he's uh no he's he's an unreal guy um you know very down to earth just i would say a simple simple guy you know likes likes his football likes his sports mm -hmm. you know sits on the couch and will watch games we'll watch them together and he controls uh, the remote yeah oh yeah mostly most of the time <laughs> no no but he's you know he's a pretty he's a just a nice guy really easy going um which is you know we get along really well and uh how it, how we became roommates was kind of like you know i went out and was looking at apartments and they were pretty expensive and they were these houses that were you know basically the same price for way more space and i was like hey you want to live together he was like sure why not so we lived together and had a great time last year and um you know decided to do a do it again this year but mm. um yeah no he's he's a great guy he's you know farm boy minnesota uh you know sim simple guy likes his likes his sports likes uh you know hanging out with everyone so so michigan guys and minnesota guys can get along they can it's, get along it yeah. is possible everyone well when he starts talking with the vikings then we get a little shaky <laughs> but uh yeah yes they can so you must be a lions guy not a lions guy no lions guy yeah. With paid, oh, right, Bob. Of course, yeah, Boston. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boston and Minnesota guys can get along, too. Yeah, that, remember, <laughs> I, I watched Miracle. I saw how, how tough that was. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, one thing, last thing I wanted to ask you for myself, Matt, is that um, a couple of your teammates said, like, you, whenever a rookie comes in, you never know. Like, how are they going to adapt? Are they going to be nervous? Are they going to be wired tight? You know, your teammates said you're very easygoing. You're, you're quick with a smile. We can see that. Like, was it hard for you to stay, like, were you at the beginning of last year when you're trying to make a good impression and everything like that? Yeah, not, not really. I mean, we have, we had such a great team, like of guys, you know, that's the first thing, you know, hockey aside, we had just good people in the locker room, uh, you know, through and through. So it was, it was pretty easy to come in and, and, you know, feel comfortable. Guys made me feel comfortable. I'd, you know, they would they would still let me know the game's different now. You know, it's not always like this. You're lucky, um, <laughs> but but they were they were great and um, you know made me feel comfortable right from the get go. And um, so so then that was just a really you know easy transition in that way. And then you know hockey wise, I you know just would try to tell myself you know have fun, not not worry about it. Um, you know you work all this time all your life to try to get to the NHL you finally get there you don't want to be you know gripping your stick tight or things like that you want to be having fun with it and enjoying mm -hmm. yourself so that was kind of my message to myself the last one for me I'm always curious about um, what you need to get out of your game to play in the NHL and a lot of college players for the longest time used to be oh we got to get the college curl out they get under the blue line they do that college curl we got to it's not going to work in the NHL rah, 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 rah. <laughs> was there something that you had to get out of your game um, something I would say, I, I wouldn't say there's anything massive. Um, I would say that definitely in college, you, um, probably, I mean, anyone, you know, you have the ability to hold on to pucks a little longer, yeah. um, things, things on that sort of line. Whereas in the NHL, you know, they close on you faster. Guys have better sticks. You know, you wait that half after extra second, his sticks there and, you know, they're going the other way. Yep. So it was, it was just that, like those little adjustments that, um, you know, you kind of had to learn in the first couple, you know, months or however long it took. And uh, once you, once you got that figured out, you were, you were, you know, golden. So fun watching Kraken last year. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a great season. Thanks Thank so much you. for doing this. Yeah. Thanks Thank you very, very much. much. Man.